Good morning, everybody. My name is Diana and I help members of the LGBT community lose weight, get fit, build confidence, and become the best versions of themselves. So I wanted to talk about how to overcome cravings when you're on your fitness journey um, because that's something I really, really struggled with. In the beginning, I had no idea about nutrition and it took me about five years on my fitness journey to start understanding nutrition. And what really made it difficult for me was working in restaurants. So I would work in restaurants, I would grab a quick breakfast um, in the morning or on my way to work. And then when I got to work in the afternoon, I would eat something there when I got there. And then before I left, I'd eat dinner. So I was eating out about three times a day, which now thinking about that absolutely blows my mind. But it's what I was doing. It was convenient for me. Um, at the time, it was hard for me to cook for one person. And with the people I lived with, we didn't really do like the entire family dinner thing ever. So it was just much easier for me to um, eat at work. Um, so yeah, I would just can grab whatever what was convenient, eat at work, you know, eat the sugar-filled coffees, drink soda, drink energy drinks, just had a terrible, terrible diet. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I wanted to go over with you guys, like how did I get from eating out three times a day to where I am now, where I eat out maybe once a week, um, and when I do eat out, it's usually still generally clean. So the first thing that I did or have done is I don't drink or smoke weed or participate in any extracurricular activities. And this is why. Other than the waste of money and the mental health issues that come about, like especially with hangovers and stuff, just like that two or three day anxiety and depression, Separate from that, um, the cravings. So right, with when we go and smoke with our friends or um, go have a few drinks, there's a good chance that by the end of the night, we're gonna be getting the munchies. And we're not really thinking about like the healthy options that we can make. During those times, um, we're just eating whatever we want. We want to enjoy the way that we feel and we kind of use that as an opportunity to indulge in whatever we want to indulge in. So cutting that out really, really helped me as far as cravings go because I didn't feel like I was fighting against like a ravenous version of myself that couldn't make decisions. Um, and on top of that, with hangovers, it's not like we're waking up and wanting to eat chicken and rice when we're hungover, you know, like our body is craving the electrolytes and the fats to kind of nourish our bodies. Um, the day after. So it just, it was a huge setback for me, the times that I drank or the times that I did smoke. And I realized this is not conducive to my fitness goals and kind of a waste of time, right? And it sets me back much further than uh, where I was before the night of drinking or before the night of smoking. Um, another big thing that really, really helped as far as alleviating cravings was especially working in restaurants, was just bringing my home cooked meals with me, just making sure I had food packed, uh, making sure I had snacks, because if I was around food all day and I did get hungry, it was really easy for me to just go grab what I brought and eat that first before I made any rash decisions about ordering food or eating a snack at work, which that took some time to iron out for sure, because there were still times, especially when you know, you're know you wanting a snack and Food is presented to you easily. Like, oh, I brought donuts. Oh, there's some extra food, da, 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 da. It's really hard to walk by that. So it was a lot of trial and error for me, just saying like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat my food before I indulge in this other food. And usually after eating my food, I would say like 85% of the time, um, I no longer wanted the other food that was around me. So that really, really helped. Uh, just staying strapped with snacks, staying strapped with the food that I had packed for my meals for the day. Plus it was much easier to calculate my calories and uh, macros that way as well. So I would highly, highly suggest just at least keeping yourself prepared, um, you know, at home, keep a batch of protein cooked on deck. That'll help tremendously as well. You know, if you get home from a long day of work and, and you're hungry, 
it's going to be hard for you to make that decision in the moment while you're hungry, while all you want to do is just eat something. You know, you feel that like obsession in a way, like you just want to fucking eat. You're starving. It is really hard to take a step back and be like, you know what? I'm, I don't have any food here. I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes cooking or like, I'm going to just go grab food really quickly. Um, it's hard to make that decision when you're hungry. It's just easier to keep cooked protein in the fridge, whether that's like chicken, ground beef, ground turkey, uh, fish, whatever it is. Um, just having that ready in the, in the fridge so you can just heat it up and eat it within five minutes and alleviate your hunger that way. Um, so yeah, that, that really helped a lot as well. Just staying prepared, staying, staying prepared for me getting snacky, me getting hungry, setting myself up for success. Um, the third thing was to find healthier, healthier alternatives. So we can all agree that eating chicken and rice every day is not necessarily like the diet that everybody wants to be on. Like we like the unhealthy foods because they taste good. They are more palatable. Um, so just finding healthier alter alternatives for the foods that you do like, for instance, like using an air fryer instead of a deep fryer with a lot of oil. Air fryer is just as good, in my opinion, sometimes better, um, and it cuts the calories down tremendously. If you decide to do that instead, using uh, turkey burgers instead of high-fat beef burgers, um, using lean steak instead of fatty steak, um, things like that. And you can find healthier alternatives to literally any of the foods that you like. Literally, you know, you could you could get a make a cheeseburger and make it healthy, you know, just by using maybe like a high protein bun, low calorie bun, uh, making your own fries in an air fryer, things like that. So just finding healthier alternatives, even with dessert, you guys can find like fat free or low fat uh, yogurts and you can have fruit instead of um, ice cream. You can even have low calorie ice cream. It's all out there, right? You just have to experiment um, look for different alternatives when you're at the store, read the labels, find things that match your macros. Um, but yeah, I would suggest just kind of trying different things out and seeing what works for you, finding things that um, you actually enjoy and incorporating those into your meal plan because that'll help you with not craving those super greasy burritos and fried foods is just being able to have them at home with less calories. Um, you'll still be able to at least get to enjoy what you're eating. The next thing is alleviating the oral fixation. So for me personally, I, I smoked cigarettes for a long time, about 12 years. And then after that, when I quit, I was vaping for about five years and I realized I just had an oral fixation. Um, I'm not necessarily always hungry when I want to eat. Sometimes I just want to snack because there's, uh, there's like some sort of like, crunch that I'm missing or flavor. I just, I just have an oral fixation. So I've realized there's ways to get past that oral fixation, um, which include having really low calorie snacks like cucumber, berries, preferably strawberries and blackberries have always been my favorite. Um, you know, like olives, pickles, anything that gives me some sort of like sensation without adding the calories. You know, you don't really want to snack on candy, um, but having low calorie options like berries, um, anything pickled is usually like zero calories. Gum, gum is another really big one for me. Um, especially lately, I've been chewing a lot of five gum because the pieces are a bit bigger with five gum. Um, instead of like the small orbit pieces. So it just feels like it alleviates that oral fixation a lot more as well. So instead of eating, you know, a, a snack or a meal that could be 400 calories, 500 calories, I'm just chewing a piece of gum and realizing I just had an oral fixation and it holds me off for another hour or two so that I'm not like packing on those extra calories. So keep that in mind as well. It could just be an oral fixation and not a craving. Um, they have a bunch of different flavors of gum as well. So like if you want something sweet, they have sweet flavored gum without the calories. If you want something not sweet, they have not sweet flavored gum without the calories. So all personal preference. The last but not least, number five, staying hydrated. Our bodies uh, tend to crave food more easily 
when we are dehydrated because our bodies are looking for, for water in whatever it can find and there is water and food therefore we can or we can mistake the dehydration for um being hungry also with staying hydrated we just have that sense of being full water in our bellies um we just have that sense of being full when we stay hydrated so that'll alleviate a lot of the cravings as well so i guarantee you that if you are struggling with cravings just trying some of these things is going to put you five steps ahead of the game. Um, you know, whether that's you just bringing gum with you and snacks with you wherever you go, whether that's you just staying more hydrated, whether that's you just quitting smoking and drinking, like those are all really big steps in the right direction. So these are the things that I personally have been able to uh, do in order to relieve my cravings, because I know it can be hard, guys. And you also have to remember that this isn't gonna be perfect. You're not gonna all of a sudden bring snacks to work with you one day and not ever mess up. Like, you're still gonna probably indulge sometimes. Someone's gonna bring your favorite crumble cookie to work and you're gonna, you're gonna eat it. Like, it's bound to happen, but it'll happen less and less with more preparation and more practice. So just remember that. If you are on your fitness journey and you start trying some of these things and you keep falling a bit short, just keep trying to stick with it. I promise you guys from someone like me who is eating out three times a day to somebody who maybe eats out once a week. These are the things that I have done over the last few years that have made the most progress um, or where I have made the most progress on my fitness journey. So I highly, highly, highly recommend trying these things. And I promise you, you'll start seeing some results as long as you just keep trying and keep getting back on the wagon when you fall short. So if you are a member of the LGBT community um, and you wanna be part of a online community where we um, talk about health, fitness, personal development, mindset, things like that, and you wanna start losing weight and building your confidence again, hit the link below, uh, go to the pridepowerhousecommunity.com and you'll be able to see if it's a good fit for you to um, get on the path of losing weight. You'll have me as your coach where we talk, we'll make a game plan, I'll hold you accountable. We will uh, be able to work together and I'll guide you through on losing, losing weight, um, getting toned and building your confidence again. So I hope this helped you guys. I love you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.